The Virgin Reading, a Renaissance masterpiece of fashion and faith. Vittor Carpaccio was one of the most influential artists of the Venetian Renaissance, known for his realistic and detailed paintings of everyday life, landscapes, and architecture. He was also a master storyteller who used his art to convey moral lessons and religious themes. One of his most famous works is The Virgin Reading, a painting that reimagines the Madonna and Child as fashionable Venetian nobles who enjoy reading books and relaxing in their garden. The painting shows the Virgin Mary, or Madonna, sitting on a low stone wall with her legs crossed at the ankles. She wears a burgundy red dress with marigold orange sleeves and a sheer veil that covers her head. Her dress has full sleeves that are cinched into pleats at the high waist. The neckline is edged with a band of nickel grey decorated with a pattern of circles and leafy forms. She holds a small book in her left hand, which has a red cover with a red ribbon. She looks to her left, as if she is reading something interesting or important. Behind her, on another wall, there is another person who seems to be her companion or lover. He is dressed in midnight blue velvet with tassels at the corners of his collar and cuffs. He leans back against a maroon red pillow that matches his clothes. He also holds a book in his right hand, but it is not clear what he is reading or looking at. The painting creates an illusion of depth by using perspective lines that converge at the horizon. The viewer's eye follows the curve of the wall behind the Madonna to see where it meets another wall on the opposite side of the garden. There are more trees and plants that add to the natural beauty of the scene. The painting also uses color to create contrast and harmony between different elements. The burgundy red dress stands out against the pale blue sky that fills most of the background. The marigold orange sleeves add warmth and brightness to the cool tones of blue and green. The sheer veil creates a soft glow around the Madonna's face, while also suggesting mystery and modesty. The painting reflects Carpaccio's skill as an artist who could capture both reality and fantasy in his paintings. He used realistic details such as shadows, textures, fabrics, jewelry, books, flowers, fruits, animals, birds, insects, etc., to create an impressionistic effect that made his paintings look like photographs or engravings. He also used symbolic elements such as books to represent knowledge and wisdom, flowers to represent beauty and love, fruits to represent fertility and abundance, animals to represent nature's creatures, birds to represent freedom, insects to represent life's diversity, etc., to convey deeper meanings about human nature and society. The painting also reflects Carpaccio's interest in religion and spirituality as well as art history. He was influenced by various sources such as classical mythology, medieval legends, Byzantine icons, Islamic calligraphy, etc., but he also created his own original style that blended different cultures, periods, genres, etc., together. He was fascinated by stories about saints, martyrs, pilgrims, travelers, etc., who experienced extraordinary events or adventures. He often depicted them in dramatic poses or scenes that showed their courage, faith, devotion, etc. One example of this is the martyrdom of Saint Ursula, which shows how Street Ursula led 11,000 virgins across Europe until they were killed by barbarians. Another example is Dream of Saint Ursula, which shows how Street Ursula had visions of heaven before she died. In both paintings, Carpaccio used vivid colors, dramatic lighting, expressive gestures, realistic details, etc., to create powerful images that appealed both to religious sensibilities and artistic tastes. In the Virgin reading, however, Carpaccio chose a different story, how Mary read books while Jesus slept beside her. This story was not very popular among Christians at that time because it implied that Mary neglected her duties as mother and did not care for Jesus' needs. It also suggested that Jesus was not very important or special because he did not wake up when Mary read books. Carpaccio may have chosen this story because he wanted to show Mary's intelligence and curiosity as well as her love for Jesus. He may have also wanted to show Jesus' innocence and trust as well as his dependence on Mary. He may have also wanted to show their peaceful relationship and their mutual respect as well as their shared interests. 
Carpaccio may have also chosen this story because he wanted to challenge some of the stereotypes and prejudices that existed in his society about women and books. At that time, women were expected to be obedient, submissive, and domestic, and not to pursue intellectual or artistic interests. Books were considered dangerous or inappropriate for women, as they could corrupt their minds or distract them from their duties. Women who read books were often seen as rebellious, heretical, or immoral. Carpaccio may have wanted to show that women could be both pious and educated, and that books could be sources of inspiration and enlightenment. He may have also wanted to show that women could have a personal and intimate relationship with God, and that reading books could enhance their spirituality and devotion. He may have also wanted to show that women could be independent and creative, and that reading books could enrich their lives and culture. Carpaccio's painting is a remarkable example of how art can express both fashion and faith, and how it can challenge and transform the norms and values of a society. The Virgin Reading is not only a beautiful and realistic portrait of a woman and a child, but also a symbolic and imaginative representation of a woman and a book. It is a painting that celebrates the power and beauty of reading, and the dignity and grace of the Virgin Mary. It is a painting that invites us to look closer and deeper, and to discover the stories and meanings behind the image. It is a painting that inspires us to read more and to learn more, and to appreciate the wonders and joys of art and literature.